Episode 119, Nadia's Origin. Ten years ago, the bottom of the deep blue sea was decorated with pearls the size of fists. The gentle light lit up the bottom of the sea, presenting a beautiful scene. Large patches of seaweed drifted with the currents, and several small, colorful fish hid into the seaweed with a swoosh, then darting out again. The sound of a female bursting into laughter rang out. A girl with draping blue curly hair was leaning by a cave with exquisite chains of shells hung around her neck and limbs. She wore clothes that were woven from the rarest seaweed and they hung over her slender body like silk. She was dressed up like a fairy of the sea, yet there was no one to admire her. She looked at the world outside, poking at the thin, invisible film that was on the edges of the cave. There was seawater outside, but air within the thin film. It would take a careful look for one to realize that the borders around the cave were all covered in such a layer of film. It's so boring. When will King and the others be back? Nadia sighed and asked. With a loud swoosh, the small fish in the seaweed all darted out, bringing forth murkiness that spread out in the seawater. Nadia immediately put her face against the thin film. A human face was pressed onto the film, but it didn't show any signs of breaking. She knew that this meant that there was danger behind the rock. However, she didn't panic. It hadn't been easy for there to be a show. She had been living here day after day, year after year. She was really being driven crazy from boredom. This was despite the fact that the males in the tribe brought all the best things to her, giving her an endless amount of food, beautiful clothes that she couldn't finish wearing. She also had an endless amount of youth and beauty. New female merfolk would only be born after the previous one was close to the end of their lifespan. Therefore, there would only be one female in the merfolk tribe. As the female merfolk in this generation, she carried the important responsibility of reproducing to keep the generation going. The males would travel far distances to look for green crystals for her, allowing her to extend her lifespan endlessly. Generations of males passed by and she made it with all of them, producing the next generation. She then continued to watch as they grew old, or if they were unable to return after a certain trip to the land. She could no longer recall how many hundred years old she was. Days like this were too boring and she was unable to bear with it any longer. Just then, a change suddenly appeared in her life. A huge snake slithered out from behind the quarry, his vibrant black and red colors giving off an intense sense of danger. Nadia knew that she should shout out anxiously, but for some reason, she had a slight craving for the snake to get near. The fact that the snake was able to avoid layers of guards and arrive at her residence proved that he was strong. Her heart suddenly palpitated, and she held on to her chest, squeezing her face outside even further. Was he a beast man from some other race? He must be able to get her out. She really wanted to go to the land. Those males were too cowardly and only dared to bring her to the surface of the sea to get a breather. At the most, they would only bring her up to sit on a small island that she could see the other end of for just a short moment. Furthermore, they would constantly keep an eye on her as well. As if hearing her thoughts, the snake's upper body suddenly changed into his human form. His half-human, half-snake form looked very similar to that of merfolk, and his long red hair drifted in the seawater, turning into a stretch of bright red. Nadia was instantly attracted by his red hair. However, his tail was too long and his scales too rough. The large patches of white scales on his abdomen especially looked like a shell. For someone like her, who was used to looking at fish tails, she felt that snake tails were too ugly. Stephen stared at the female in the cave and swam over. Putting out a finger, he slid open the film that Nadia had been unable to break no matter what she did. 
Nadia screamed and took a step back, falling to the ground. Seawater rushed in, causing the female's beautiful clothes to get wet. Can you get me out? Nadia didn't appear nervous. The female's reaction caused Stephen to raise his brows. He had come across this group of merfolks by chance and came over to take a look because he was bored. He hadn't expected that the merfolk tribe's female would be so beautiful, and he couldn't help but want to bring her away with him. However, he hadn't expected that not only was the merfolk tribe's female not afraid of him, she even took the initiative to speak with him. It should be because the merfolk tribe's males hadn't told her how terrifying snake beast men were. Of course, Stephen spoke up, spurting out a chain of bubbles. His voice sounded very stifled as it entered the water. Snakes were unable to breathe in water, but after gaining four animal stripes, they would be able to store a tremendous amount of oxygen in the air sac in their body. It wouldn't be a problem for him to stay in the water without breathing for 10 days to half a month. However, the air in his chest was limited, and once he let them out, they'd be gone. He couldn't speak too much. After saying this, Stephen wasn't planning on saying anything anymore. He lifted the female out. Nadia was elated as she went towards Stephen. When she came into contact with a body temperature that was cold like that of the merfolks, the joy on her face faded a little. There didn't seem to be any difference from merfolks. Was he also a race that lived in the water? It didn't matter. She'd get onto land before making further decisions. On the way, Nadia was greatly astonished by how powerful the snake beast man was. Even though there were so many merfolk guards, none of them had managed to detect their traces at all. Stephen moved along with the currents and swam out of the encirclement. His speed was very fast as well. Just as Nadia was unable to hold her breath anymore, they reached the water surface. The light rays of the outside world were a lot brighter than that at the bottom of the sea. Nadia squinted her eyes the moment she went up to the surface of the water. However, this didn't affect her excitement. I breathed it! The air is warm! Nadia closed her eyes, speaking with a hint of bossiness in her voice. Quickly take me to the shores. I want to look at the land. Stephen assessed her for a while before swimming toward the shores without saying a word. Nadia's eyes gradually became accustomed to the light rays, and she was now able to barely open her eyes a little with her hand blocking above her eyes. When they got near to the shores, she felt that the seawater had become warm. This made her feel very surprised. It's so warm. This continued until her feet landed on the seething hot and rough sand. <gasps> Nadia let out a scream and bellowed furiously. What's the matter with you? It's so hot, but you made me step on it. Stephen didn't reply, but just quietly glanced at the female mermaid. He then looked toward the vast and endless blue sea, saying in a soft voice, I'll take you back. This voice sounded even more clear than it did in the sea. However, it also let Nadia feel the ice cold and heartlessness in his voice very clearly. Nadia's rationality rapidly came back to her as she looked at the lush green world of the land. She gently held onto the snake beast man's arm, speaking in a sobbing voice. Why? The sand was too scorching and I only flared up at you because I was given a fright. I won't do it again in the future. Stephen turned his head to look at her, his eyes that resembled amber stones emitting a doubtful glow. He liked the female merfolk's appearance, otherwise he wouldn't have brought her out. However, he couldn't really accept her character, especially when she had been too noisy earlier on. He wasn't willing to live amidst a ruckus in the future. The current Stephen wouldn't have expected that ten years later he'd live in a place that was a lot noisier than this female, and that he wasn't even able to go out freely. However, it was where his heart was. 
As long as he could watch over his beloved and stay by her side, it wouldn't matter how horrible the environment was. Nadia softly cuddled up to him, becoming very quiet. Stephen hesitated as well. As they were close to each other, Stephen could feel the sudden tensing of the female's body. With his lips curled up coldly, he grabbed the petite hand that was preparing to attack the back of his neck using a sharp seashell. Nadia's face, that was ridiculously fair to begin with, turned as white as dead ash instantly. With her hand forced to clench due to the tight grip around it, she felt a piercing pain from her fingers. Blood droplets of a vibrant shade of red slipped down her hair and delicate fingers. <gasps> Let go of me! Nadia yelped in pain. Stephen tossed her hand away. When Nadia saw how much blood she had lost, she nearly fainted from shock. Seeing that the snake beast man was prepared to send her back into the sea, Nadia retreated in spite of the pain and shrieked loudly, No! I don't want to go back there! Stephen cast a lazy glance at her. Up to you. With that, Stephen left in a suave manner. There was a patrolling team in the vicinity. So long as this female wasn't too unlucky, she would be rescued by them. Looking at how scheming she was, Stephen figured she would be able to live well anywhere. Hence, Stephen, who was lazy by nature, decided to wash his hands of this matter. Immensely relieved, Nadia let out an exhale. As she washed the bloodstains off her hands in the seawater with her brows furrowed, she scolded the snake beast man countless times in her heart. Was she not pretty enough? Clearly the males all said she was the most beautiful female ever. Or was it that the females on land were prettier? She had to check it out herself. My goodness, are you a lone female? Amidst the lush greenery, Nadia met the second non-merfolk beast man she had ever seen in her life. His appearance was rather peculiar and he wasn't good looking. However, his thrilled reaction pleased her. His hands were very large. Although rough, they felt very warm. The instant Nadia touched his hands, she fondled them admiringly in her hands and found herself reluctant to part with them. You like me? Completely different from the attitude of that snake beast man earlier, this male sounded overwhelmed with honor. Nadia nodded her head with a faint smile. Although this male wasn't good-looking, his body was very warm. It was the temperature of sunshine. I... I belong to the ape tribe. How about you? With a dazzling smile, Nadia replied, Merfolk. She thought about Stephen, but perhaps it was even better that he didn't take a fancy to her. She didn't like snake beast men in the least bit as well. As for those merfolk males in the seas... She would return once she had enough fun. Time zoomed back to reality. Nadia ran back to the castle in a haste. At the sight of her, the ape king instantly ran up and held her in an embrace. How did it go? The ape king stared at Nadia with a palpitating heart, concerned as to whether she was able to make Rex fall for her. Nadia slapped the strand of hair on the ape king's chest. This is the hair you wanted. I'm going upstairs to rest. Don't come and bother me. With an expression that turned instantly sunny, the ape king carefully picked up the strand of hair. I won't let you down. Nadia didn't reply to him. Hopefully this ape beast man would succeed in obtaining a green crystal. It had been 10 years already. If she still didn't manage to get her hands on a green crystal, her looks would start to wither. Even the death of a beast man didn't dampen the joy of rain falling upon the city of beast men. Merry laughter and chatter could be heard everywhere. To celebrate yesterday's rain, Roger deliberately cooked many dishes, all of which were Blair's favorites, though the quantity wasn't a lot. 
Steven, Roger, Rex, and the little snakes were seated around the food. Well, it was just for celebration to get into the festive mood. Wait a minute. I'll go and carry a bucket of grape wine over. Blair took a whiff of the aroma of the food and was prepared to turn around when Roger held her down by the shoulders and made her sit back down. I'll go and get it. Blair, therefore, instructed him, Bring the highest bucket by the side. I added the egg white of a bird inside. The grape wine should be clearer, 